down. Because we always want the corners heavier, we're going to start there. And as we work down, see how we're swooshing into this? We want to leave some light areas because for once, we're really not going to put clouds in here, but we're going to leave the background with light colors in it. And that's going to look like you have lighter and darker areas in your sky. And we're going to start from this way and we're bringing our set into the, that's gonna make some really pretty soft, soft sky here. And so we want our skyline, our horizon to be about right here. See where I'm kind of doing it across the page, across the canvas. We're bringing it down to here. Now, I want to take this same brush and I'm going to put the waterline in. And I'm afraid if I move it so that this camera shows it more, then that camera will show it less. No. Nope. Who knew? All right, so I am starting not from the outside of the canvas, but right from the edge of the canvas and pulling in. From the edge of the canvas and pulling in. See? Now I'm going to do the same over here. From the edge of the canvas, pulling in. And now... See how I'm putting that? And I'm leaving the light in the middle so that it will look like a reflection of light. Isn't that going to be pretty? Looks like a mess now, then I promise it will be pretty when we get through. Okay, so now I want to soften this. See how I'm softening this? And I still want to leave my bit of a waterline look but I want this to be softer over here. You know, all this stuff prep we do, we usually cover it up in the end, but I feel better about it when you start off with a good canvas. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? It almost looks like water now and we hadn't done anything. Okay, now up here, what we're going to do since we have some water in this brush, you know, as in, because water and oil do not mix, okay? So we're going to take here, and we're softly going across. We're just streaking it back and forth. And that's really softening up that sky. Isn't that pretty? So back and forth, back and forth. Can you hear my brush on the canvas? Okay, so now what I want to do is add some more magic white into this. And in doing that, I'm going to soften this darker area because we don't really want it quite that dark. Oh yeah, isn't that beautiful? It's just amazing what you can do with some paint in a brush. I hope y'all enjoying this. Now, right across here. Wow. See how some colors coming in this center? I don't know. Y'all maybe tell me what I need to do. I have a glow coming from the window and I cannot decide how to get rid of it. It just is not working. So by tomorrow, we will have covered that window so that we do not have that problem. But I hope you'll bear with us today while we're trying to get the this all straightened out. Now, I think that's a very good start. So now we want to uh, set this brush aside. Now I'm going to put it in a cleaning fluid, odorless paint thinner, uh, which we have a difficult time finding that. And I know if uh, Neha is watching right now, she is telling me she's cringing because she hates for me to say odorless because she doesn't feel like there's any such thing. Bob Ross cleaner is the closest to odorless, but, uh, and also Mona Lisa. So if you buy odorless paint thinner, those would be the two that I would highly recommend because I am terribly allergic to them. This is a one inch oval bristle brush. See this, this is one of Bob Ross's brushes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put in some background. Um, there's my palette knife. It's a wonderful moment. 
I have a little mountain mix and I have a little Van Dyke brown. Or actually, that's dark sienna and Van Dyke brown. Okay. So, I want to first put in the mountain mix. And I have a cloth that I'm wiping my brush in. I will wash it once it dries. So, I am going to make sure that I have this uh, thalo blue and thalo green in this. But I want to brush in a little bit of that mixture and tap it on there to make sure this is a very dark color. There we go with a little sap green in it. Beautiful. Wait till you see this color. So these are going to be our background trees. So, and we're softly putting these in. You don't want to just get a real dark. So see how these are just, oh, isn't that pretty? Can you see that tree? Yeah. Oh yeah. This one needs to be a little bit closer to here. Anyway, so there. All right, so this is going, these trees are going to be in our background here. I really apologize. I don't know what else to say. We didn't know that we've not had this difficulty before. These are going to be just beautiful. What I'm going to do now is just take a liner brush, excuse me, I think you have every brush you need until this happens. So this is a Bob Ross liner brush and I am actually dipping it in the paint thinner and then into this color that I'm using now because these are going to be background and I am swiggling, excuse me, swiggling that out to a point. So now I'm going to bring these trees from this area up and see how we're getting that background. We are actually, that tree is behind this one. See how it is? Now see, we have two trees here. This one's at a little bit of a slant. There we go. And like I say, by the time we get through, these are not going to be showing. Now this is more of a little tree that's kind of leaning at a distance. So. And you can always do this first and get a better direction of where the trees are going. It will work in the end. So now we're going to rinse this just a little to get that paint out. And we're going to go back again and make sure that our limbs are exactly where we want them. Now, some will be in front of the tree, some will be behind it. It's hard to determine. This one we want up here. These are in the very, very distant. But see how we're softening these trees just by doing this. Isn't that a lot of paint? Doesn't it go a long way? just by tapping into these colors. Okay, so now we want to start putting some uh, background in again. So now we're going to use this sap green color. We're tapping into it, but we want to use a one inch brush with it. So I have it right here. And what we're doing now is laying in this background color right here. So this is doing like this. See how we're pushing up on that? Isn't that pretty? Looks like grass already, doesn't it? So there we go, right here. And what I'm doing, it's all in the way you put the pressure on the brush. If you tap in like this, and then you just push up like that, it gives you beautiful, beautiful landscape right there. So... Now, that's about as far as we're going to go here. I want to start over here, and we're doing it again. Now, this is going to show more background, so I'm putting a little more paint, and look at that. There you go. Just that one little stroke. Isn't that easy? You just touch and press, 
And let me tell you, when you're doing a fine art and you do something like this, it takes you all day just to get this one technique in here. And with this, the my granddaughter said that, uh, Taylor said that I should name this Tips, Tricks, and Techniques. You know what? I don't think she was wrong because I seem to be using that. Of course, you know, you can't argue with your grandchildren once they get grown anyway, right? Little humor, very little. Okay, so now we have this going across like this. And see how we're not meeting it there? What we're going to do is allow our water to flow into here. We're going to have some waterfalls in here. It is going to be beautiful by the time you finish. So let's put some more in here. And I'm wiping this out. And this one out. So now we are going to take a fan brush. I'm going to take a number three fan brush. And as you see, everything's falling, or as you heard. So you always want to prepare your brush by just touching it into the Odalis paint thinner, or paint thinner, don't cringe. And now we're going to use some Mountain Mix with some Van Dyke Brown. That actually looks like, I have it under Mountain Mix, but I think it's Van Dyke Brown and um, Dark Sienna. And so now we're going to put a couple of trees in here. We want them to be right up front. So here we are pushing. See how we're going up with this? Look at that. And we get it, as we go up, we have uh, a thinner tree, right? You know how they look in the forest, right? Now, you know, I always name trees. We're getting to the point we can name them now. So let's see, who can we come up with this one? This one is front and center, so I would say that's Taylor. She's probably telling everybody where to stand in the forest, which she's really good at that, I might say. That is not a criticism. That is a compliment. Okay. Now, over here, we might put Danielle. She's standing right here. <clears throat> now, Danielle has her say, too. I'm not saying she doesn't. Now, let's put a limb over here, and we want to go up further with it. There we go. Isn't that pretty? So easy, isn't it? So now, we're going to put Will right over here. Y'all know I name them after my grandchildren, right? I'm going to have to start naming them after some other people. But I have permission with them, so... Let's put an Aaron in here. Aaron is one of my son-in-laws. I have a grandson-in-laws. I have wonderful grandson-in-laws. My granddaughters did really well. So that's Aaron. We're gonna put Caleb here. Caleb is right here. He's gonna be very tall as he goes up. Now this, you take a little bit of time because you want to space your trees out. Those are looking really pretty good, huh? So now, let's put, who are we going to put over here? I'm going to put one, maybe. Let's name him Michael. Let me tell you about Michael. Michael is the guy that's helping me with my videos. Can I tell you how wonderful he is? All my son-in-laws, my grandson, my grandson-in-laws, I should say, not son-in-laws. My grandson-in-laws helped me with this, and so did my grandchildren. And everybody I know, <laughs> kind of. Okay, so those are looking really good. So we're going to wipe this brush out, and we are going to clean it. Now we're going to go back to the brush we were using. Because th these are all still background trees, and they're really going to be pretty. So we are using the same colors with sap green in it. We're using the thalo blue, the thalo green, and sap green. 
and this is going to give us a, um, a color that's going to look more vibrant or heavier. So here we go. Same thing in that pretty look at that. See, we need more paint on the brush to do this because we want it to be closer up. Now, sometimes like see this, I don't know if you can see this one, but it looks like that little uh, limb, the uh, um, leaves on it go behind this tree. And that's what you want. Some of your limbs will come out in front of the tree. Some go to the side and some go behind it. So remember that when you're painting. Now let's start over here. And this one is going to, we're going to bring it up like this. Now that one's a little thick, but see when you start highlighting, that will change all that. Now see how we're putting this limb behind Caleb? And now here we go, we're gonna put one over here. But see, if you name your trees, then you actually know which tree is which. You may have different names for them. Now this is uh, Taylor right here, right? Isn't that who we named? And now we're going to Maybe have to put a little limb in here for her, here and there. I wanted Taylor to come up and be really close to the front. That's why I made her larger than the other trees. Sorry, I've got to find the brush. The one I just used. And now we need to put some limbs coming out to here. See how that works? And then this limb, we want it to go right up there. This one comes over here. And this one's got lots of limbs on it. So since it's up close, I'm guessing maybe it hasn't had as many animals around, hadn't stunted its growth. So in seeing this one, it's one of the um, trees that's coming up front like this. There we go. We want it as far up as we can get it right in this area. And I'm making the sides of it rough because the bark and it's making it look like it's up closer. There we go. Now we have one right here, Danielle. And we have Aaron back here, so we're going to put Aaron there. Doesn't that look pretty? Do you like it? I love it. Now, this one seems to be getting a better view, the, this camera that I'm facing now, or this phone. And so I will probably save this and uh, put it on both Facebooks and on YouTube because... I think we're getting a better view of it and only because of that window. So we will have that fixed by tomorrow. Now tomorrow we're going to be at one o'clock doing this. If I can make that a little taller there. Okay. And putting some little limbs in here. See, it's all about what you want to do to your tree. Now that we've done those, let me clean out this brush. So now we want to make some shorter trees back here. So we're going back into our same paint that Prussian, it's not Prussian, it's Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, <clears throat> and Sap Green. And so let's put right in here some little heavier trees. Now, I had a, a uh, hair, don't know if you can see it or not, that was on there. If you get a hair on your canvas, you just lift it up with your brush and it comes right off. So now this is going to be this tree right in here and we're making it heavier right through here. Oh yeah. So now we're going to get some more. Let's make this one right here. Now, these little trees probably are the great-grandchildren, so that's 
Jules and Ellie. Now we're going to put our Alice right here. We need to put Bradley on here. So we'll put Bradley over here. Now I have more grandchildren than these, but I don't have permission to. I, and it's only because I hadn't asked, I'm sure. So there we're going to put that bush over there. Now some of these will get covered up, so we have to be really careful. Maybe we will do another Bradley here because it might show up. So Now see, doing these in front of that tree makes it look like it's closer in. Now Caleb looks like he's up close to this one, you see? So, and that's how you position your trees. And let's see. I'm gonna put a Adeline right here. Isn't she pretty? Okay, so, uh, and I'll put the rest of the grandchildren in later, our children, as the case may be. So, maybe I will, uh, later on, paint a Charlotte, a Bill, and a Julie. Not necessarily in that order, but. So, right in here, we are going to add some more little tree limbs, see? You know what, I'm gonna use the palette knife to put those in. That makes it much easier. A small palette knife, here we go. Now, let's cut across a little bit of this Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna. And we're going to make some trees with that. I'm actually, this is a small, a number three. Uh, I think it's a number three. Of course, the number has worn off of it but it has two sides of it. So I'm using this corner there to make it very small. Since I'm doing the smaller trees, see the paint on this corner? That's the one that I'm using. So this is going to be my bark. This, see the bark coming in there? There we go. I may be putting some other, yeah, little branches in there, here and there. These are starting to look like little groves of trees. So that's what we're doing. We're putting some of these in here. Now this looks like it's straight in front of that one. So we need to actually make it look like it's off to the side because we don't want it to look just like that. So now we're putting this up like this. So we have two of them there. And we'll put a little highlight on that. Okay, so there we go. Aren't trees easy? I had somebody tell me after last week's uh, Bob Ross that uh, painting mountains was difficult. I look difficult. It's not. It just takes practice. I cannot tell y'all how much I appreciate all the views on last week's videos that we did. I mean, that was absolutely fantastic. Now I'm putting like, I'm just putting in here some branches and bark and, so it makes it set up some from you when you do that. Now, I also wanna show you an easy way to do this when you're doing bushes. Okay, so now we wanna scratch in some, like right in here. So we're using, see what I'm using? I'm using the tip 
of the um, palette knife, and it's the small palette knife. But see how we're just making that bush right there? Then we'll put some highlight, some uh, shrubbery on it. Okay, right in there. Those are really cute on it. And you can do them like this. You don't get as much doing it like that. So. Or I don't. Let's say it that way. But see how we're doing this? Okay, so now that we've got the trunks in and the bushes right there, we're going to come back with this green and we're going to tap some of these bushes right in here. See? Didn't that soften that? Looks really good, doesn't it? Anywhere that you got too extreme with what you were doing, just tap over it just with a little bit of this. And you're putting more. And we may cover up a lot of this by the time we get through. But that's the way it works. Now, let's start with uh, putting some more land masses in here. So for this, I'm going to use a 2-inch brush. Is it 2-inch? And now, we're going to tap in to more sap green than, than the uh, phthalo blue and phthalo green. <clears throat> which means, sorry, I'm right in front of the camera there. I ran out of sap green. So I am adding more sap green to my palette. I always wonder who names paints. Where did they get this as being sap green? And what is sap green? Anyway, just my thought on it. So, <laughs> all right, you didn't ask for that, did you? Not at all. So um, we're going to put in more of the land mass. So right now, right in here, we are pushing up with this. Look at that. We're putting more grass in there. Put a little of the phthalo blue to, yeah, there. There we go. A little phthalo green in it. And see how we are making the land mass come out here? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Now we're gonna bring that over a little and then this here. It was only a palette knife, thank goodness. Hopefully it didn't end on the tip because you can definitely tell when people have used the palette knives or they have dropped because of the, um, they may bend. And when you start to use one to make a line and it, uh, or to scrape off paint actually, then you see where it actually has uh, bent. So bending your palette knife or using it for something other than painting, that's good money you spent there, so don't ruin it by using it for something other than painting. And don't drop it on the floor. Lesson learned, huh? <laughs> okay, so this is going to be this side of the terrain here. And then over here, we're doing the same thing. And see how I'm touching and pushing up with it? I touch straight on and push up. I know you probably can't see it. Touch and push up. And it looks like grass or weed you get instant gratification, which I really like. Okay, so I'm tapping more. I'm gonna put a little more of that phthalo green in there with the sap green. Now we're going to do a waterfall down through here. <clears throat> we're going to make the rapids so that you can see where the is splashing up against the uh, edge of where the the landscape is, where it's going into the river. I think we might even put a bridge across here. Let's see, let me put some of this in here. And then tomorrow we'll put a bridge across there. That is so easy to do. You will love it. Now we're putting some of this color up in this landscape up here. 
There we go. And I think we have just about uh, wrapped up for today. We will finish this tomorrow at 1 p.m. So y'all don't tune in at 10. We're talking 1 p.m. So this will be, we'll have trees in here. We'll have bushes in here tomorrow. And then we will finish the water coming down through it there. So please come and paint with me tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Time. Have a great day. And I hope your day is filled with lots of love and laughter. Bye.